today on Combustion Chamber Live, we're here at Cars and Coffee Central Florida, the premier and largest cars and coffee in the area, and it's all for a good cause. Let's get after it. Hey everybody, my name is Jonathan Springer and I'm a realtor with Mainframe Real Estate. I'm a sponsor here at Cars and Coffee Central Florida to be your resource for Central Florida real estate transactions. If you have any questions, you see me out, please feel free to come over and say hi. Happy to help you out. All right, let's get things started off right today with this Porsche GT3. We had a car very similar to this on our show, a same color, but it was a 991 GT3 RS. And hands down, one of the best cars I've ever driven. I went into turns faster than I would in most any other car. The car is basically a race car from the factory. Just an outstanding machine. I really like seeing these out here. Absolutely love these cars. Porsche really, really nails it with the GT3s. And right next to it, another car that I absolutely love, especially in this color, a Lamborghini Aventador Super Veloce. Now, what makes this car special? Well, all wheel drive, naturally aspirated 12 cylinder, over 700 horsepower. I love the pearlescent blue kind of color with the orange calipers and the orange accents on the interior there. But some of the things they do on the Super Veloce is they remove some of the active aero components for weight reduction. So these air inlets on a regular Aventador articulate up and down as necessary, as does the wing in the back. But as you can see, it is all replaced with fixed carbon fiber pieces. Absolutely outstanding car. And here we have a Lamborghini Huracan. This would be the rear wheel drive spider, and I'll show you how you can spot the difference between the two in just a second. But one of the things I love about this car is its unique color. I've never seen another Lamborghini painted in this color. It's very nice, and it's got the matching accents on the interior as well. So this would be a naturally aspirated 10 cylinder, 580 horsepower. You can have it tuned up uh, as much as uh, 630, at least that's what uh, I've seen. If you've seen some of my other coverage on social media, I've driven a Spider that's rear wheel drive that's tuned up to 630, but 580 stock. And like I said, just a, just a hell of a color on this car. And we've got another rear wheel drive Hurricane right next to it with red accents, pretty slick looking. Park next to a Ferrari 458 Italia, a naturally aspirated V8, one of their last naturally aspirated cars, putting out, uh, I think, 570 horsepower. We've had one of these on our show, really fantastic car. And here we go, we have a very special edition Ferrari right here. Now, some people say it's wrapped, some people say it's painted, what do you think? But uh, this is that next level for the 458. Really nice car, really nice to have it out here today. Now we talked about Hurricane's rear wheel drive and all wheel drive earlier. This would be an all wheel drive car. How can you tell by just looking at it? Well, the front end design is very different. Look at those angles at the front end and then we spin around over here and we go back and look at the front end design right there very different. Now the red accents might be aftermarket, but the front end design is different. Plus, typically, unless the owner removes it, the all-wheel drive will have badging right down here. So let's go around and check out some more cars. Have another 458 Italia here. Like I said, naturally aspirated V8. 570 horsepower and a white Hurricane all-wheel drive 610 horsepower. It's got some red accents across it as well and a nice two-tone interior there as well as some red accents across the back. And right here we got a BMW i8, a electric car that does not look like an electric car. It's very sleek in its styling, very nice car. I think this car really, I'm not sure how popular it is. I don't see too many of them, but I really like the car. I think it's, I think it looks futuristic. I think it looks cool. You know, I mean, it's, it's one thing if you want to drive an electric car, but man, Priuses are ugly. <laughs> They're dog ugly. 
But this is pretty cool looking. And right here, we've got a Porsche GT3 RS. Beautiful spec. I love the black with the yellow highlights and those gold wheels there. And if you come down here, you can see how big these rotors are. And we saw a GT3 earlier, and I, and I remarked on the GT3 RS we've had on our show. I'll put a link below to that episode, but this car is one of the best I've ever driven. Uh, I would put it up there, probably at least in my personal just opinion, uh, Huracan Purpermonte. Uh, just the, the ability to corner and handle, and, and we took it on a track at Sebring, and that is in the episode, so I think you all like that. And then right here, we got the Beast of the Green Hell. This is not a wrap. Some people see this semi-matte kind of finish, and they're like, oh, it's wrapped. Absolutely not. This is how this car comes if you order it as such. It's got some nice carbon fiber accents. I love the uh, gold or yellow type seat belts there. Love the interior design on this. Never driven one of these though, but I definitely should. And here we have not one, but two Ferrari Californias. Now I really like these cars. I've driven one uh, that was a friend's. He doesn't have it anymore. Uh, he actually sold it for an Aston Martin DB11. But I like these cars because of the hard top convertible combination here. So this will fold back into the trunk. So you can have the, the, the hard top when you need it, you know, if it's raining or whatever. And then you get the convertible. Very comfortable car to drive. Now, of course, they've got the California T. So some of the cars are turboed. Some of the cars are naturally aspirated. I believe these are both Californias and not the T. And right next to it, a classic Ferrari. I love this, man. This car is stunning. Now, you know, the, the, the latest and greatest stuff is always awesome. I like it, but it's great to see cars from this era, people keeping them, taking care of them. And of course, one of the best things, gated stick shift. I've driven a, um, what was it, a 348 gated stick shift? You know, just a nice cruising car. And this is pretty wicked. What does GTS stand for? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think it stands for? And right next to it, Aston Martin DBS. We are recording this on, what is it? That's like International James Bond Day. So we've got a couple of really slick Aston Martins here. I've driven a DB9 and then a V12 Vantage S convertible. And I'm a huge, huge Aston Martin fan. Uh, I think you've seen me wearing a bunch of Aston Martin hats and, and things of that nature. Big, big fan of their, uh, their GT, GT3 racing team and of course, Formula One. Um, been to the manufacturing facility uh, in Gaydon and it was, uh, I got the tour and all that and it was absolutely fantastic. Just a huge, huge fan of these cars. And of course, here is the V8 Vantage. Uh, another massive leap forward for the company. Got to see these getting built. I went down the DB11 and DBS line, but we still got to take a look at these. And you can see the interior. I mean, I like this DBS that we just checked out. We could, you can see how they've really stepped up their game on their interior. However, if the, the infotainment controls and screen looks a little familiar, that is actually sourced from Mercedes-Benz. That's how they cut some costs so they don't have to just design theirs from scratch. Really fantastic looking car though. So this is a new vehicle, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, Moke. It's all electric it looks like there. I, I've never seen one of these before. I think I heard about one briefly. That is, uh, it's an interesting vehicle. You know, from a distance you might think uh, that it's something older that somebody has kind of brought back to life, but apparently this is a brand new electric vehicle brought out here today. And we have uh, one hell of a turnout here today, and we've got this Ford GT. Now this was built uh, for several reasons, and one of them was to celebrate 100 years of Ford. So take a look at the headlights. One, zero, zero, 100 years of Ford. I've got a uh, friend that has one of these, very nice guy. We filmed his car years ago for a charity uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty wild car. I really like, I mean, it's a good looking car, but I like the, the, the look from the back, the, the big bootay, and those massive, very wide tires there. 
And here we've got an Audi with some brand new wheels on it. Now, I also think he replaced the badging with this blackout badging right there. Very cool. But the owner actually works at Forge and invited me there last weekend for one of their events to kind of help explain some of these cars better to me. They are front wheel drive or all wheel drive and come in a variety of different packages. Very nice. If you follow us on Instagram, you would have seen that I was at Forge and, and had a very good and informative time. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes such as this. We're also on, like I said, Instagram, Facebook, sometimes Twitter. And if you really love us, check us out on Patreon. And right here, we've got Jim's Viper. This is the, the final generation of this vehicle, at least for now. This car is track capable, track ready, and he does track it. It's a hell of a car, naturally aspirated 10 cylinder engine, as they all are, and this one has got a stick shift. Uh, the owner uh, has informed me that he's gonna put a cage in it, and they, he's getting really, really in to, to tracking this car. It's sponsored, it's over here with Tent World, but there's something very special about this car, and I think you might see it right there. That combustion chamber sticker there, Right, adds I think 5,000 horsepower to your car. If you want to send me a message, I'll send you one for free. 5,000 horsepower from just a sticker, man. <laughs> but I really like Jim, he's a good friend. He's been on our show before. We had his final edition Viper and he did some burnouts for a good cause. And it's great to see him with this Viper and tracking it on a regular basis. Gorgeous pair of Mercedes here. One two-door, one four-door, one with AMG badging, which means performance. Spin around here, check it out. Got those high bolstered seats here. Has what, a 6.3 liter engine in it, I think? Very, very cool vehicle. And we spin around here and check out this Jaguar. Now, you don't see too many of these at any shows really, unless you're at some sort of British show or some concourse event. Uh, he's got the clamshell hood up and I really love this body style. Uh, you know, you've, you see these a lot in convertible as well, but this one is in fantastic condition. I love the, uh, the old school logo right there. Um, actually, there's a movie uh, with Jean-Claude Van Damme called Hard Target. And the villain is played by Lance Hendrickson, and he's got a black one of these, and I believe it's a convertible. Um, so movies and cars are kind of my thing. Uh, and this one's in great shape. As you can see, the wood grain, uh, the interior is just fantastic. There's not cracks, there's not nicks and dings. Uh, the owner uh, definitely has taken uh, exceptionally great care of this vehicle. And here we have another Ferrari California. This is very close in the spec that I used to drive my friends at. Uh, with the silver and that tan interior. Very hard to see though, because it's tinted. And right here we got this awesome chopped Volkswagen Beetle here. Looks like it's definitely lowered. It's got a nice stance to it. Very cool car. These are definitely worth fixing up. Have a friend that is fixing one up right now. This one's in pretty good shape as well. Now some people Put a lot of power Ooh, look at that that's chromed out and it's my understanding that some porsche motors fit in the back of these i'm not an expert in these cars but i know porsche motors do uh do fit back there of course volkswagen porsche same uh, same origin you know mr porsche now check this out you don't see too many of these here in the states although they do sell them here i've, I've seen some of these at other shows these are supposed to be real nimble, real agile, and I actually like roadsters like this. Um, you know, I know the MR2 has the engine in the back, but I've driven things like a Saturn Sky, Pontiac Solstice. Like I said, they're, they're different cars, but they're, they're small power plants, but lightweight, a total blast to drive. And I talked to an owner about a year ago who had one of these and had nothing but positive things to say about it. A lot of fun, and I need to get, I need to get uh, on one of these and maybe put one on the show, but this is, uh, this is slick, and it's good looking. And right here, right next to it, we got a Jaguar F-Type. I've driven um, both the Coupe A and convertible, both with the supercharged 5-liter. Now, this is when the car first came out. Now, they've got different packages and different options. 
and uh, you could get with a V8 or a V6 at that time. I still believe that's an option. This one's got some accents on it and some custom interior work there. I like the, uh, the, that red stitching there on the armrest. But how can you tell the difference between a six cylinder and an eight cylinder? Well, we've got a great pair here to, 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 to give that as an example. See the dual tips in the center? That's V6. You come over here and it's got dual tips on either side, that's the V8. And this one happens to be the all wheel drive version which came out uh, shortly after the car uh, debuted. I think it was the next model year, possibly. But both cars have an active aero component right here where the, the leaper is. This will articulate as necessary when you're going down the road. Uh, I really like the metallic blue on this one. Has a slightly different hood design when it's all wheel drive. Also has the side skirts you see there. But uh, having driven these, uh, I love them. Uh, I fell, fell right in love with these cars. Right next to it, Volkswagen GTI. I talked to the owner this morning. He definitely shined up his car for this event. Uh, once again, these smaller cars, you know, I know this is a four door, but it can be nimble, it can be agile. Uh, there's a lot of aftermarket parts for them. And the owners that have them just love them to death. And, and you know, it's, it's good to see that people have a diverse set of, of tastes. And that's what I like about this show. Yes, it's for a good cause for Nemours Children's Hospital, but all are welcome. It is a Ferrari California Fest out here today. I think this is the fourth one who we've seen here today. But once again, I believe this is the California T. It's got a slightly different front end design when it's the T. So I believe this is that. I might be mistaken though. I've only driven the, nat the naturally aspirated version, but check this out right here. This thing is wicked and I bet it scoots. Now it's got a little negative camber in the back. I don't know if this thing is bagged or not, but it's got some huge tires out back. And these kind of cars are, are some of my favorites because it's all about speed and, and nothing else. Uh, this thing is gorgeous. I really need to learn more about this car as well, but I like cars that are just driving. No infotainment systems, no navigation. Uh, doesn't beep at you for every little thing. It's all about the driving experience. So. This car is pretty wicked. Let's check out some of that suspension. We can get right under this wing here. Definitely uh, put a couple bucks into this. And he's got the air cooled in the Coca-Cola uh, font there. Man, I bet this thing scoots. So here is my 2004 Pontiac GTO that has been modified, of course. It says Pontiac, it says GTO, but it was actually originally manufactured in Australia as a Holden Monero. Uh, however, it did come with the American engine and transmission, uh, the 5.7 liter LS1. Uh, I really love this car. I've talked about it at length. We're not going to spend too much time on it today. However, I really like this car. This is a fourth gen F body. This is a Firehawk. Now, what I like about these is when you think Firehawk, you think the later years when they had the refresh design where it had the different front end. Um, of course, it still had the badging and the, and the decals say Firehawk, but it didn't have this, uh, this wing here. It had the elevated one that you would get on a Trans Am or a WS6 Trans Am. And I, when I saw this pull in today, I was like, this, is, this car is uh, awesome. Um, the owner talked to me about it. It's slightly a work in progress, but still in very good condition. And if you're familiar with F-bodies, this actually has the V6's nose on it. And that wing, that lower profile one, usually denotes V6, and we'll check that out on another car in just a little bit. But it does come with a functional, functional hood scoop that feeds right into the air box here. And honestly, if you stripped it of, of the wheels and the decals, a lot of people would probably mistake this for a V6, when in fact it's powered by the LT1 5.7 liter engine. So it does have aluminum heads, but it's an iron block. And this was the engine right before you know, LS became a thing. Uh, first debuted in the Corvette and then in the F body. Right here, Firebird Formula. I love third gens. I don't care what people say about it. Well, I love all generations of F bodies. I'm just a huge, huge fan of the car. But uh, this third gen is, is, is in great condition. It's got the five liter engine. Check out how clean that interior is. Now, when you see a lot of uh, cars from the 80s, I don't care if they're Ford or Chevy or Pontiac, you know, you got cracked dashes and all that. So I don't know if this has been restored or it's just been meticulously 
uh, well kept, but the dash is in great condition. The interior is in great condition. And it's a stick shift car. Now, if you look closer there, what's that thing uh, uh, right below the gauges? That's called a tape deck. Uh, a lot of y'all may not know what that is, but uh, yes, they used to put cassette tapes in cars. And then when it would eat the tape, you'd have to pull it out carefully and then use a pen or pencil to, to wind the tape back into the cassette. And we come over here and we've got a bandit style Trans Am. This would be a second generation F body. So an F body was the designation for the Camaro and Firebird lineup. Once again, love the car, love that it's out here in good condition. You know, some people, you know, it's got the Firebird on the hood, but some people <laughs> refer to it as the screaming chicken. So uh, some enthusiasts call it that, then some people who drive other lesser cars were trying to make fun of this, but this car is great. Of course, Smokey and the Bandit, a classic film. And our latest episode on Combustion Chamber actually has a fourth gen WS6 Trans Am. And that owner and his father uh, had a cameo appearance in Smokey and the Bandit 2. So check that out on our channel. And another, another clean third gen. Now, I was surprised to see all the Pontiacs line up here. I just happened to park over there when I get here early just to, just to, get, a, uh, just to get out of the way and get set up to shoot. But uh, this is a great, great looking car. You know, you, a lot of people recognize this from Knight Rider when it had, you know, the custom front end. And the interior color looks very close to the color uh, of, of a Knight Rider car. Of course, now getting the, if you want to convert this car, getting the entire dash set up uh, and the front end is a lot, a lot easier now. Uh, it's just a matter of money like, like any car modification is. But to see these second gens, these third gens, and these fourth gens out here today in such great condition is awesome. I love this car. I love the gold wheels on the black there. And we come over here and we've got a formula. Okay, I just noticed this. I'm gonna take a little time out here. It's got the NHRA badge on it. You do not see very many of these. In fact, the last time I saw an NHRA badged it was a Trans Am. It was sort of a golden-ish color. It was in 2000. Uh, we talked about that in our latest episode of Combustion Chamber because the last of the breed badging was manufactured by uh, the same company that did those. Very, very cool car. And when these cars got the refresh, they got the LS1 power plant and the V6 cars got upgraded from 3.6 liter to 3.8 liter. So this is another really slick example of an F body. It's a shame that they canceled these cars and then of course they put Pontiac out of business. But uh, if you're looking for an affordable hot rod that's fun to drive, check out the fourth gens, man. You know, when the next when the next generation of, an, of a car comes out like the fifth gen Camaro, people tend to forget about these cars. But I'm gonna tell you, I've autocrossed these cars, I've driven them quite extensively, and the fourth gens are fantastic, especially the LS powered ones. And here, we've had a lot of Pontiacs. Today. We got a front wheel drive example here, a Pontiac Sunfire. Now, there was a legendary builder and racer, uh, Lingenfelter, who actually raced these. He wants to prove that you could do stuff with them. And this one is got a, a skull hanging off the back there with a rope. It's got uh, NASA badging on it there. Of course, I love uh, love NASA, and it's a manual transmission. A pretty interesting looking ride out here today. Okay, so here we've got a Mazda Titan. This is a right-hand drive truck. Now, when I was in Iraq, we called these bongo trucks. They sat a little lower, um, but you find these all over Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and to see one out here that has been restored rather beautifully uh, is really cool. And, and various different auto, auto manufacturers make small trucks like this that have uh, torquey little motors to get up and go. And uh, as you can see, this one is in great condition. It's really cool to see something neat and unique out here like this. Now I'm gonna come around here and check out the Figaro. Now if this looks familiar to you, and I hope it does, we've had this on our show. Uh, I'll put a link below to this episode, but this is actually a 91 Nissan. It was a design exercise, only sold in Japan for one year. A lot of people see it, they think it's a, a 60s era car, possibly post-war car from Europe. It is actually a 91 Nissan built car. And it became legal to purchase here in the States. And when that happened, the owner picked it up. 
and like the, the truck next to it, it is right-hand drive. And driving a, a right-hand drive car is always interesting for me. I almost made it through the entire shoot without accidentally triggering the windshield wipers when I was trying to, to signal a lane change. But this car is, is a great design exercise and a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun to drive. And then we spin around right here and we've got a Shelby Cobra in a great color combination, black and gold. Typically powered by a 427 Cobra engine. Of course, Ford and Shelby were partners. And that new movie coming out, Ford versus Ferrari, promises to be a pretty good movie. And I actually am a fan of that director. Uh, so I think it's gonna be a pretty, pretty awesome film. And this car is very clean and very slick. And right here, we've got a 1941 Packard. I had to look at the sign though, to be honest with you. And you don't see a Packard hardly ever. You usually see these at concourse shows. And this one is in great shape. It does have some uh, late model stuff on. Of course, those seats there, probably not original, but that's okay. This owner drives this car, was driven here, not trailered here. And as you can see, he's got aftermarket wheels on it right down here with the Willwood brake package. Now, I know there's a lot of purists when it comes to these cars, but I have no problem with people upgrading these to make them more drivable, uh, a little safer. And I think that's a good thing because you want to drive these cars. These cars were meant to be driven. That's what the designers wanted. That's what the manufacturers wanted. So if you want to upgrade it, make it a little safer to some modern standards with upgraded brakes or seats or seat belts, then have at it. But this is a fantastic car. And the Mopar guys never fail when it comes to coming out to these shows. We've got a 392 Hemi here. We've got Chargers, Challengers, Hellcats. I really love the green on this and those deep wheels there. I think that's a great wheel design for this car. If you've seen some of our past videos, I've commented on it quite a lot, really like it. But these guys always come out in force. There's huge clubs in this area. Um, Mopar Outlaws, who I've worked with in the past, great, outstanding group of people. And we've got a Minion here. Now, if you see these little bugs flying around, it's we call them love bugs. It's love bug season. They're attracted to bright colored cars. Uh, they can also damage your paint if you hit them hard enough, is at least what I've been told. So you definitely want to protect your car from that. But we got the, uh, the Minion right there. And of course, we've got the Mopar Outlaws of Florida badging. And we've got this Charger here, Hellcat, supercharged, over 700 horsepower in a car that if you wanted to, you could drive every day. And that's what's really fascinating about these vehicles. Here we got a, Mer uh, excuse me, almost said Mercedes. Whoa, some, some uh, German car fans are gonna get real mad at me for that one. But we got a nice clean BMW here a convertible. I have, to, I have to, to say, I don't know a whole lot about this particular one. Um, I remember seeing these when they came out and usually, you know, your M series cars are, get a lot of the attention, but I actually really like that wood grain in there. It's a really nice car. And right next to it, we have something radically different, a turboed four cylinder Camaro. Now, how can you spot if it's a turboed four cylinder? Well, it has a unique front design for this sixth generation car. Now, some people, you, know, you got people that think they're purists and they're really angry. I you know, can't believe a Camaro comes with a four cylinder, but this is not the first time it has. At the tail end of the second generation, they came with an inline four cylinder. They're very hard to find and, and you hardly will ever see them at a show, but they did produce them. In fact, I would actually like to get one just because they're so rare. Now, this produces a lot more horsepower than that four cylinder did back in the early 80s and late 70s but this car is, is enjoyed by the people who own it. it. It has a remote start, as you can see, it fired up. So it's all about what you like. It's also about, you know, sometimes the insurance gets you. My first Camaro that I, that I drove while I was working on the 67 was uh, a V6, because I was under 25 and that insurance was gonna get me. Right here, we got a fourth generation Z28 with the LS1. This has the sports appearance package. Prior to this redesign, it was typically reserved for rally sport. A uh, work in progress, but that's okay. Uh, you, there's so many aftermarket parts for these cars and restoration parts that uh, you can bring it back to life. And it looks like that's what this owner is doing right now. But with that LS1, that's a bulletproof engine if you treat it right. And next to it, late model muscle, a Mustang GT350. So here's something you don't see a lot of, or at least at this show, even though all are welcome, uh, a Ford Lightning pickup truck. In fact, there are two more in the background right over there. Uh, so it's lowered suspension. You can't, you, you can still, I think you can tow a little bit with it. You can still haul 
a little bit in the bed, but not like you can with a regular truck. Of course, this is built for speed and, and better handling from a truck. Pretty, pretty slick design. It's good to see these out here because you don't see them very often. Porsche and this plum uh, Challenger here, pretty cool color. And that right here, sexy. we've got two, two Supras. We've got the classic that's popular. Everybody loves it. And then we've got a new Supra that's already been modified. It looks like, check out those wheels there. Now I wanna know your thoughts on the Supra, the new one. You know, a lot of people love the classic one. I, I haven't met too many people that hate it. Uh, even if they're not into imports, they really respect it. But in a lot of ways, the new Supra has been controversial. So what do you think? Do you like it? Would you get one? If you had the opportunity to buy a brand new car, would you get the Supra or would you wait for the mini engine Corvette? So let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes such as this. And this, I believe, it's a first gen Viper. When these cars were first manufactured, they were pretty stripped down. Uh, this has got a sound system in it. Looks like he's got the uh, uh, little window right there. But when these were first uh, made, they didn't come with a whole lot. I don't even think they came with AC. So on this particular one, I don't know how much of this is aftermarket. I mean, I'm sure the wheels are, but the rest of it, not exactly sure. Forge Motorsports out here with this Audi A6. We saw them earlier. Once again, got to learn more about these cars. But I got to check out some really awesome machined work at Forge. They had these uh, billet blow-off valves uh, and just great material, great uh, high-quality stuff. So once again, these can come in all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and various other configurations. And right here, the Ford guys, specifically the Mustangs, always out in force. Got a classic uh, Fox body here with a 302 in there. At least that's what the badging says. You never know what they could have done to it. If you're looking for affordable horsepower, uh, the Fox body is it, man. And some people put LS engines in there. Not my thing, but some people do. Uh, it's really whatever you want to make it. Got a lot of late model Mustangs here. And this was, uh, I believe, the refresh for this generation. The nose comes down just a little bit more. So we've got uh, six cylinders. I'm sure some four cylinders out here. Of course, the V8, the five liter. Very slick looking car. I always highlight this one because I absolutely love uh, the badging there, the mechanical horse there. Now, you might know this as a cop car, but this one is called the Punisher. I saw it earlier. Uh, they made a special edition of these called a Marauder. Uh, you may have been pulled over <laughs> by a car that looks like this. So I don't know if this is a Marauder or it's just, you know, just happens to be black. It looks like it's got uh, a Mustang wheels on it. It doesn't have, it's a police interceptor badging on the back, but if it was a Marauder, it would have the badging uh, right across the bumper right there imprinted into it. So uh, pretty cool stuff though. So here's an absolutely fantastic car. Now it's debadged, but as far as I can tell, this is a fifth generation Z28. Probably one of my favorite cars. No, sadly I have not driven one, but um, this is, when they came out with this version of the Z20, of course, it was very expensive. This has the no bow tie on it, but it had something called a flow tie, was cut out for airflow. Of course, the hood is functional. Came with, uh, I believe, Recaro seats. Although this has got seats that say SS on it. So this might be a, um, has some one LE parts to it. So this might be a super sport that is, well, definitely modified. So you'd have to really talk to the owner because the badging has been taken off. It does have the Nurburg ring decal on it there, which I believe some Z28s came with that. But if this has got SS seats, then it's most likely an SS and the side skirts, I believe, are aftermarket. And to be honest with you, I'm going to say, oh, so this might be a 1LE because it's got the infotainment system. And I believe the Z28 was gutted of the infotainment system. So pretty cool looking car. And it makes you think it makes you recall your, your memory and, and guess all the, the things that they've done to it. I pointed these out earlier, these two Ford Lightnings. Now, of course, this one's got an aftermarket hood on it. Uh, SVT, what does SVT stand for? Special Vehicles Team. Uh, they're responsible for uh, enhanced performance across the range. So they'd even uh, soup up Tauruses back in the day. Of course, Mustangs, you've seen that on there, and the pickup trucks. Right here, though, we've got these nice little hatchback cars. These were actually manufactured in Germany come in front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. A lot of owners 
put the uh, or uh, bought them with the stick shift. Let's see. Uh, okay, aftermarket shifter there. So some people have had issues with the automatics, but a lot of these hardcore enthusiasts like this person definitely uh, put some money into this car and probably tracks it. Like the cage it's got there, the racing seats, rear seat delete, definitely gutted this car to a certain degree uh, for performance. And when it's all wheel drive and as light as this car is and its width, I bet this thing will really, really scoot, especially the more weight that you strip off the vehicle. So that is very cool uh, to see that out here today. You know, you could buy this car and make it a daily driver, or you can do that to it. All right, we've got the new Tesla, or new-ish. I believe, is this, uh, okay, this is the Model 3, I believe. I'm not a Tesla expert, but a lot of people really like these. They just got a, a new, um, programming upgrade it has the retrieval option so if it's raining it will drop you off like outside of a restaurant if it's raining and then come back and pick you up later uh, car parks itself drives itself I, I'm fascinated by the technology and also just a little bit scared I saw a documentary called the Terminator and where we built machines that came to life and then tried to kill us all um, also I'm a huge fan of maximum overdrive where uh, a comet passes by Earth and possesses anything mechanical or electrical. So you have semi-trucks that are on the loose killing people. It's a movie uh, with a score by ACDC. It was written and directed by Stephen King uh, back when he had a severe coke problem, and it shows, but it's a hell of a movie. So I do like the Teslas. I respect the technology, but I'm always a little nervous about cars that can drive themselves. And we got more Mustangs here, five liters, uh, six cylinders, and these, of course, like the Camaros, do have a turboed four cylinder. And we come over here and we've got one of the latest iterations of the Camaro. Now, this front end is pretty controversial. I always ask y'all, what do you think about it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? It only lasted one model a year, so will it be a collectible thing down the road? Now, what have they changed with the new, new front end? They've this flow tie here that's cut out, they've moved that up into the grill, sealed that bow tie cutout, and then this black section here has been painted to match whatever body color you get. However, I know a lot of people don't like the front end, but the performance level of these cars is pretty outstanding, especially given the history and lineage of the Camaro. So what do you think about that front end? Right here, we've got a Polaris slingshot. Now, I've never seen one with a wing on it like that. I don't know if that is something that, that they give as an option or it's supplied by an aftermarket uh, a manufacturer. Got a little tongue-tied there. But I've, I've always wanted to drive one of these, and I, and I really need to. I love the red carbon fiber stick shift there. But I like these. In fact, there's another vehicle here that's a three-wheel vehicle, and uh, we should go check that out after we get done looking at this. Now, check this out, a McLaren P1. This car was a huge step forward for the company. And if I remember one of the unique things about this car, and I hope I get this right if I remember correctly, but when you let off the accelerator just a little bit, the brakes don't grab immediately, but they begin to move in so that when you engage the brake, the reaction time is, is milliseconds. Very intuitive car, very high performance car, of course, very good looking. Functional scoop, of course, everything on this car is functional and driver oriented. The wing is semi-deployed uh, semi there, so very cool to see this out here today. Uh, I, I'm, I'm blown away. I've always liked this car, always respected its, its design and its engineering. And right over here, let's spin around, we got more McLaren action. We've got a 720S, probably one of my favorite McLarens. This is the, the new convertible version. I love it in this metallic orange. You know, if you grew up in Texas, you refer to it as uh, burnt orange or, you know, the UT orange color. Um, however, this car, it's really fantastic. Now, this obviously has the top that comes down, but when this is a, a hard top car, you have such great visibility, uh, especially for a, a mid-engine car. But this, <laughs> this is wicked. But we're not done with the McLaren Madness quite yet. We've got a 600 LT right here. Once again, convertible, beautiful car. So we've seen some great examples. We have the 600 LT, we've got the 720S, we have the P1, right? We've got the exhaust tips coming out of the top here, but what else do we have here that's McLaren? 
we've got the Cinna. The Cinna right here, of course, named after the famous Formula One driver from Brazil. I've been to Brazil. I'm married to a Brazilian, and Cinna is like a god. And so he raced for McLaren, uh, and so they built this car as a tribute to him. Um, totally built for the track. However, you could drive it on the street. This was not trailered here today. And the seats, the Senna seats have become so popular, they've put them in other models. There's a 600 LT uh, that I've seen uh, that's very rare, but has the Senna seats. So this one's specked out pretty cool. It's got the yellow accents throughout, and on the paddles there, he's got the green, which I think that's just a nice touch. Of course, it's got a very small window, and it's got that transparent part right there. But this car really is built for the track. However, you can bring it on the street like this. Uh, but everything on it is 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 functional it's built to perform people who have these have nothing but good things to say about them now if you look here in america we actually got usually we get you know cars that are limited in some ways some from some manufacturers however we got a different version of the Senna. the european spec has a third pipe and i believe it's for something else they had to do something to meet with the european union standards or or uh whatever they whatever hippie nonsense they, they, they uh, put into law. But this car is really fantastic and it's awesome to see it out here today along with these other great McLarens. Now I said you'd see another three-wheeled vehicle earlier in the video and here it is, this Vanderhall. Three wheels, very different than the Polaris Slingshot. It's got a modern yet slightly retro look to it. I love the wood paneling that you see going down the side here. The wood steering wheel and uh, you know it's got very accurate gauges that are modern but still have a very classic look to it. You've got machined aluminum, but still very nice. It still it maintains a very classic look to it. Really like these quite a lot. And here we have a modified Infiniti G35. Now, why does it get the 35 designation? Because it's powered by a 3.5 liter V6. Of course, this one's modified. Looks like it's got a body kit on it. It's got Sparco racing seats in there, but these are actually really, really good cars. And the, the future, the next iteration, is this Q60 here. This is powered by a turbo three liter. Now we've had one of these on the show. It was a different spec, I believe a different engine as well. Very powerful, very fast, twin turboed car that we had on our show. Turbo spool up, turbo lag is a thing of the past, especially with this car. Uh, really, really love Infinities. And, this is going to sound weird, but I like the way some interiors smell. Every car smells differently. And Infiniti, uh, the Q50s and these Q60s have uh, some of my favorite smelling interiors. Just how the leather and the plastic and everything kind of comes together. Uh, I know that sounds weird. Uh, another one of my favorite car smells is uh, hot classic muscle vinyl on a hot day. Of course, we got BMW, Audi. We've got all sorts of nice vehicles out here today. And we're down here, we're getting into the imports, the stanced cars, cars from Japan. Very neat stuff all the way around. Some cars that I don't know very much about. This is an older Corolla. That's pretty cool. You see a lot of late models when it comes to the imports, but when you see something a little older, I think that's pretty cool. It's still running, still on the streets. And here we've got a Nissan 370Z, of course, powered by the 3.7 liter engine. Now, I'm not sure if it's the exact 3.7 liter engine that comes in an Infiniti. I know that's probably specced a little differently or tuned differently, but the exact differences I'm not quite sure of. But if it's a 350, 3.5 liter. 370, 3.7 liter. And as you can see, this one has uh, some custom carbon fiber work to it. Beautiful uh, interior seats there, man, that pop. Uh, against that black. Very cool. Of course, we're getting attacked by love bugs out here today. Not, not the most fun in the world. It's that season, happens twice a year. And we have this big, big wing on the back. And a really neat, semi-hidden Japanese flag. And then we come down here, we've got a car that's a little bit more stock, beautiful in red, 370Z. And you can pick these cars up used for a pretty good price. Uh, it's my understanding. Um, and these cars are beautiful. They still perform well, handle well. 
and it's great yeah, yeah. because there's lots of parts for them. You can get them uh, at a good deal, and I don't think the cars have changed too much over the years. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because it makes it more attainable uh, for other people. So here is one of those controversial Camaros with the controversial front in there. Uh, looks like it's got an aftermarket stripe down the center, or maybe that is a factory option, I'm not sure. But it has a V-flag fender emblem. Now the, the emblem above, right there, is uh, factory, it says Camaro on it. Most of y'all probably know that. The V8 is aftermarket. However, the first generation did come with a V-flag fender emblem. However, it didn't say V8. Typically, the V inserted into the 8 was older Fords, actually. And right here, we have another 370Z. You might have seen these gold wheels on the intro of last month's Combustion Chamber Live covering this same event. So 3.7 liter power. He's got those uh, unique uh, lug nuts there that are multicolored on the gold wheel. Sorry about all the love bugs, y'all. It's just, it's that season. And here we have the Hondas. We've got an older Honda right here that has been gutted. The airbag has been removed. He's got Sparco racing seats. These don't look like they recline. Looks like they're fixed. He's got the harness. He's got the cage, gutted the interior. So this guy's taking it to the next level, uh, absolutely sure. And here we've got two Honda Civic Type Rs. Which one do you like, the red or the blue? Aside from that, they almost look like identical spec cars. Now Honda, of course, responding to what the enthusiasts want, give you racing seats. They're probably a little bit more comfortable than the Sparkos and do recline, but they do come with pass-throughs for the harness. And this wing out back here, and this arrow, uh, as far as I know, is all stock. You've got it here on the red, and then you have it here on the blue. So very, very close and identical looking cars. So which one do you like, the red or the blue? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes such as this. So right here, we've got a great motorcycle turnout today. We've got Triumphs, BMWs, an Apria. Now, I'm gonna tell you, well, we heard that um, from that Audi R8 over there, uh, which can come with a V8 or a V10. But let's get back to these motorcycles real quick because I don't know anything about motorcycles, so I would love it if you know, educate me in the comment section below. I do like this cli uh, classic looking Triumph here, British motorcycle, I know that much. And the Apria, I believe, is it Italian? Um, manufactured in Italy? I'm not sure. I, I know that uh, it was in the first Transformers. Uh, the, the actor uh, and the stunt person rode it uh, for, for a really cool stunt. He slid it on the ground and shot up and at a, a transformer obviously very complicated stunt work there but beautiful bikes all the way around so if you know about these motorcycles let me know down in the comment section below so we have a pair of very unique cars here of course the fox body convertible gt very nice car you could actually see one of these with this full body kit on it in a movie called the getaway with alec baldwin it's actually a remake that's a pretty uh, clean looking car in that movie it's like a butternut yellow kind of color uh, but this one is in great condition. So these are cars that you can get a hold of uh, relatively cheaply and turn into race cars. And of course, this one's got a cage in it. So sometimes you see them in pretty rough condition or just race condition, meaning, meaning they're not super clean. But this one really is. So very nice car. Uh, and this would be the Fox body from the, from the 80s. Very affordable muscle. And right next to it, who are you going to call? Well, this is our sponsor. Uh, the realtor that sponsors this episode. This is his BMW. Around Halloween time, he wraps it in the, the Ghostbusters logo here. Uh, so, very cool car. And this has been an outstanding event. Once again, for a good cause, Nemours Children's Hospital. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and bell icon. I love coming here, love covering this event. I want to thank everybody for watching today. I really want to know your thoughts on what was your favorite car in today's episode. It's a lot of fun to come out here. And I want to say something. I run into people who watch the show at events like this and the kind words and the support that you constantly show is really amazing. And it really means a lot to me that I'm creating something that y'all like and enjoy so much. So I want to thank you very much. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with episodes like this. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you really love us, check us out on Patreon.